In today's show, we're gonna talk about the Power Apps lookup function. That's right, every time I say lookup, I'm gonna look up. No, probably not. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over this very core function. We're gonna go over the basics. We're then gonna go over something I didn't even know until just today, we're doing my research. And then finally, we're gonna talk about it, kind of a couple things unique to the SharePoint and to the Dataverse data sets, just so you kind of get an idea. So nothing too advanced, but I feel like this function's used so much, we should probably all know how to use it the right way. So that's what we're gonna do. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're gonna to talk about the lookup function in Power Apps. And the lookup function is one of those great little re functions, right? It lets us get a record, which means we can get a single row from a table. And once we get that data back, then we can use that in our labels and other functions to update, edit, it doesn't matter. There's so much to do, but a lot of times it's really nice to be able to grab a single record. And I know that it's really important to me because every time I'm in flow, who doesn't have a lookup function, boo, I get really frustrated. So anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through the basics of the lookup function, including how to do like and filterings and ors, make sure you understand how that goes in there. Then we're gonna look at a way to use it that I didn't know was possible, but you probably already did, but we're gonna look at that. And then I'm gonna show you a little specifics around complex data sources like SharePoint and then Dataverse, just to make sure we kinda of cover all the questions, right? That's what drives these cuties or uh, quick Thursday tip videos is these questions you guys have. So let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. On my desktop, to get us started, we're going to just jump right in. I've already added a gallery, and this gallery in this case is connected to my favorite SharePoint list, but remember what we're about to do in this portion is not SharePoint specific. And so the reason I put the data here so we could kind of see the data, because now what I want to do is throw a label on the screen, because this is what, you know, the easiest way for me to validate and talk about a function. And the idea of this lookup function is it lets us get a single record, a single row out of our table. And if you haven't, like if you're like, whoa, record, what's that? The video from last week, I'll put a link somewhere up there. It has a complete breakdown of tables versus records versus fields, but we're not gonna get into that today. So I'm assuming you know what a record is. So lookup is how we get a specific record. And in its most simple form, it's something like this. Lookup, employees, right? That's my name and data source. And then what I wanna do, how about let's just find the last name column, so that's one of the columns in my data source, is equal to young. And so this should return Nicole's record. And for me, often what I'll do is I close this. Now you'll see an error right away. Why are you getting the error, right? Because the idea is that labels have to show text, and this is returning the entire record. I could preview it and say, look, there's all my data. Awesome. But we don't want that. We want to actually show in this label something like maybe Nicole's email address. So what I'll do is I'll go to the end of the line here, do a dot, and start to type, oh yeah, employee email. And now we should see Nicola's email address. There you go, world, there's Nicola's email address. And so in its most simple form, that's what lookup is, that's how we use it. Now what's important to understand is that you notice in my data set, like there's Nicola, there's me, there's Chewy, we all have Young as the last name, but it chose Nicola, why? Because the lookup function grabs the first record that matches your query. So in this case, um, Nicole was the first young in our list. Like, you know, the data just said, hey, give me the first one. She's the first one that got created. So she comes out through the lookup function. So that is important to note. It will never return more than one record, which is different than if you use filter. Filter returns a whole table of records, which would have returned Nicola, myself, and Chewy. And one reason I want to bring this up is because it's very common for people, let's just throw another label on here, that they, they're very comfortable with filters, so right, they'll do things like this. So right, filter, employees, where, same thing, right? Last name equals uh, young. And so then obviously that returns a table. So that returns the record for, like I said, uh, Nicola, myself, and Chewy. But then what they'll do is they'll say, okay, well, I know that there is a first function. And so then the first function grabs the first record that matches that criteria, and then they throw a dot here, and then their employee email. So we see this a lot in people's code because they don't know about lookup, and you can see it, it works. It's not delegable, and if you don't know what that means, watch the delegation video, but it's not, uh, I get mad when I see this. Don't write your code this way, okay? Right? We don't wanna be doing no first, we just do a lookup to get the first match, right? So that's a bad one. Now. Let's say, what if we wanted to take this query and 
do something more complex. Like maybe we want the last name of Young and the first name of Shane. But what we can do is we can just do an and in here. So we can say and, and then the column name is first name, and first name equals Shane, like that. And then we can do employee email. And so then now we should get an email hit for me. Yay, there I am. So with lookup, you can do complex queries. And so that's an and. You could do an or. So maybe, let's see, we'll do uh, Peter and Taylor, right? So you could have done something like this. Look up where the last name equals Peter or the last name we'll do here equals Taylor, right? That's Jeff's last name down there. And so then what is this going to return? This is going to return Greg because even though, and I can scroll down and show you that, Taylor, and I think Ferguson's also Taylor, yep. So even though that returned, you know, there's multiple hits in the database or the table for that, it's not uh, important because this is only going to return the first match. So you can write these more complex queries in here, okay? So it is wholeness, that is how lookup works. Okay, that was, so that's the stuff that you should have already known. Now, some people might already know that you can also come right here, and so some people prefer this syntax. So this will return the exact same hit, right? This is still Greg's record, but what happens after this comma is we're just saying, show me the employee email field. Ready for a thing I didn't know? This does not have to be a single field. You could do, show me the employee email and, um, let's see, we'll do a space and then we'll do his department. His department like this. And so then now watch what happens here. This is like news to me. So it got Greg at powerapps911.com dash not space finance, right? And that was his email address. So you can actually do crazy things like this. You could also say, hey, maybe you want to take his age, right? That's another column in the data or on the record and multiply it by his hourly wage. Look at this. This is going to actually do the math on the fly. And so there is Greg's hourly wage computed or well, his hourly wage times his age, which is weird but such is life. But so that really opened my eyes, right? I never realized that I could go get a record and then do some type of calculation here, some type of concatenation. I could apply any of my formulas or function to format it so then it would spit out here. So that is lookup at a little bit more of an advanced level. Now remember the most common reason we use lookup is like this, like we wanna make a label to show some data. The other reason is sometimes you wanna make that as an input into your patches, right? because you want to update a specific record. So it's patch data source, look up to the data source to find the record I want to change and then change the field, right? Let's just write that out real quick. So both way. So we might say something like this, right? Patch employees. How about this? Look up, right? Because remember with patch, it's like, hey, what record do you want to change? Well, I want to change the record from employees as well, where the, um, We'll just do the last name equals young again. Last name equals young. And then, so that returns the whole record. So here I didn't need to give it a field because it wanted the whole record. And so then what I'm going to do, we're going to say just change uh, Nicola's name. How we'll just change her, yeah, we'll just change her first name. We'll give Nicola a new first name. Change her first name to be Nick, right? That's what I often call her instead of Nicola. And so then, now I put this inside of a... Um, um, a label, that doesn't work, duh. All right, throw it in a button, I'll put that on a button, paste that in, and if we press the button now, Nicola's name should change to Nick Young. Ah, oh. right, we can't have an operated formula here, this is, duh, Shane. Okay, so that's a couple of the things I wanted to show you about this, I realize I'm starting to run out of time here. So the other thing um, that I wanted to talk to you for a moment about here is if you're trying to find out if your lookup is, um, has data or not, sorry, so here we just did employee email. Remember that you would use is blank, that would be how you would check, right? So if we put an is blank around this, is blank. And so that's gonna come back as false, right? But if I change the last name to Y, I have no one in my company with the last name of Y, then now is blank is true. So is blanks how you would check this. And we talk about some of that like in my duplicates video where we use lookup to make sure we're not gonna create a duplicate. Okay, now on the SharePoint front, one thing I wanted to cover that is SharePoint specific, because I promised you guys lots of these little fun little specific things. So here, 
um, we have a column in my SharePoint list called favorite color. And so favorite color equals red. But you're going to see that this doesn't work. And it just tells you a very simple, if we hover, invalid argument type. The reason for that is favorite color is a choices field, is a complex column. So what you have to do is you have to say favorite color dot value. So in SharePoint, if you're using choice columns or any of those other complex columns, you might run into this. You're going to have to look at like a column name dot value. But now you can see that Greg apparently is the first person with red as their favorite color, right? We can just change this to favorite color to see. Oh, favorite color dot value, Shane. And so, yep, yeah, Greg, Greg is the right hit for that. Okay. So if choices columns would look up in SharePoint, that's how you're going to do it. If we go over to this screen, I have another data set. So I'm using this list called Chewy Trackers, but it's not a SharePoint list this time. It is a Dataverse, or CDS as we used to call it, uh, entity or table as we now call them. Whatever, you, whatever the thing is, it's Dataverse data. And so over here, if I want to um, color of his mood, this one is also a choice column. But over here, what you're going to have to do is instead of doing color of his mood, right, that's the name of the column, Instead of saying color of his mood dot value, right? That's not a thing in Dataverse. In Dataverse, you have to, we wanted to find red, so you can see reds right here. But my option set or choices set, as I think they're now called, but my option set for that one was called color of his mood. So I had to find color of his mood dot options. And then when I did a dot here, you can see I got the different values. So it's the other side, it's the right side of the equal sign that you have to adjust if you're using option sets in Dataverse. So a little more complex than we want. I think I've got a whole video on that as well where I talk about those, but I just want to throw that out here. I think these were the most common challenges I was seeing with this. So, so hopefully you like this. Hopefully you learned a little quick something here around lookup. You know, there's, there is crazier stuff like in the bowels, like lookups inside of lookups and things, but we're not going to go there today. So anyway, if you have any questions, comments, ideas for future videos like this, leave them below. I answer all my comments as often as I can. I'm a little behind again, but I'll, I'll, maybe I'll work on it this afternoon. Um, also remember, I've got an upcoming training class over there. Um, February 22nd, we are doing the app builders. And then of course, when we get into March, we're going to do our Dataverse for Teams class. So if you're interested in either one of those, go check us out over at training.powerapps911.com. And with all that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.